Good day, Grade Tents. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science on this beautiful Thursday. Hey, it's almost Friday. We've almost made it all the way through the week. And um, before we start carrying on, we'll start with our lesson today, which is carrying on with electric circuits. Um, I would like to just show you guys again how to enroll in case you're new here or in case you've been lazy and you haven't enrolled and you've kind of missed it. I know because I've got students who I will have them want to join the group the whole year and come September just before the prelim for the fine for the matrix they'll go ma'am how do you enroll again and I'm like ah oh. so here we go okay first of all you need to go to your web browser whether it be um, Firefox or Google Chrome I mean Google Chrome yeah um, or your edge or if you're on your cell phone your opera whatever okay and you need to type in www.toenable dot org okay and you'll come to this landing page so when you if you're a first time user which this is who i'm aiming this at then what you need to do is you need to put your first name in here your last name and your email address and then click register and then just follow the instructions and then you can log in and once when you log in you need to obviously put in your email address your password click the remember me button simply because then it makes life easy and then press the login okay and it'll bring you to this page and when you get to this page it's not going to be so full you're going to have your choose subject your progress and results and the to enable help online line and photograph and what you need to do is click choose subject okay and then you'll come across a list of all the subjects the to enable offers not all the not all online but I mean as in live lessons but they're all online and you need to go and find the one that says physical science grade 10 click on it press enroll and what will happen is it'll pick kick you back to the screen but now there'll be a blue button that says physical science grade 10 so now you know you're enrolled okay so then if there are any live assessments running for the physical science so for example at the end of the section I'm probably going to run a live assessment for electric electricity. It's going to be a multiple choice questionnaire. And all you need to do is you'll see that there's a red button with a number one in it if there's one live assessment or two or whatever. And what happens is I give you a certain amount of time to do that live assessment. And then what I really want to do is find out what you guys know or don't know from what we've taught you. And then I don't, I don't get specific answers, okay? I don't get, oh, that Johnny from Joburg got number three wrong. I just get a percentage. So I get, oh, look, percentage of kids got this question wrong. Now let me go and reteach that section. Okay, so that's all that, that is. It's just to help me make sure that you guys understand the whole section. Next up, we get to the upcoming events. And this is the most important button when it comes to these live lessons. To view a live lesson, you need to click on upcoming events. Okay, so you select that and you get to a page that looks similar to this. And then you need to go and find grade 10 physical science and watch out for the dates because sometimes, obviously I might list a whole bunch of lessons in a row, I might not, but sometimes I do. And if that's the case, then there might be different dates here. So for example, here is Wednesday, 20th of July and Thursday is 21st of July. So you need to be careful to choose the one that you actually do want to watch. So here is a grade 10 physical science. So you click view event and you'll get to a pop up that does this and you need to click the open live TV link. OK, the OK just goes yes, OK, and now I know what this is about. And then you need to get to, you'll get to a screen that looks something like this and it'll give you the start time and the date just to confirm and what the subject is. And then you'll see this button that says open field feed in new tab. You can do that and I would suggest you do because it makes the screen slightly bigger. Okay, then most importantly, you need to press the big green button to join the event, not this one, this is for me. You need to cl click the big green button and there you go, you will get to the live session. Now listen, if you guys have got sport or something 
on at the time that there's a lesson you can go watch a recording of the lesson so you can watch a recording of this lesson the cool thing about watching the recording is that you can obviously fast forward through the bits that you don't under, that you know or whatever also what's nice is if you are watching a live lesson and you didn't quite understand something i said or you missed it or you want to watch it again because you didn't you need to watch it to understand it again then you can go and watch the recording you do exactly the same steps and you click this join the event okay but now the difference the big difference between a live event and a recording is this button here and that's the other reason i want you guys to join the grade 10 science class and that's because you can message me if you message me you can message me about what sections you want to do or you can message me about certain questions that you go want to go through etc etc so um i've had a lot of kids say to me okay we're desperate to go through a specific section and then what will happen is that once i have finished the section i'm on then i will make sure that the next section i do is that or you could say right um I really struggled with this exam question and then you can send it to us and we can go through it, okay? But this message studio button does not work during a recording. It only works during a live session. So you need to make sure that you're on during a live session in order to record, to message me, okay? So please make, make sure that you do that. Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's now carry on with our electric circuits. So, in our last lesson, we spoke about resistors in series, okay? And we got out this cool thing here. And I just want to close all this, otherwise it's going to get a little bit distracting and confusing. I forgot to do it before. There we go. Gone. Okay, now. Here is a simulation or whatever you want to call it. Um, that um, is produced by the University of Colorado. Um, it's If you want to go to their website, it's PHET. Anyway, the point is that what I was doing in the last lesson is I was showing you what would happen to the current and the vo current and voltage in a series circuit. And remember we said that a series circuit was one where all, everything was one after the other. In other words, I could draw a line going all the way around the circuit without lifting up my pen. Okay, you know, it's going, okay. And what I showed you was that if I close the circuit, then at the moment, because of the way it's been set, all of these ammeters measure, well, they all will always measure the same in a series circuit, okay? And remember the ammeter measures the rate at which the current is going around, the rate at which the electrons are flowing, okay? And then I said to you, okay, what would happen, and note the brightness of the, the light bulbs, okay? And then I said, hang on, what would happen if I had to take a wire and I had to cut out one of the light bulbs? Okay, and remember I said to you that electrons are very lazy. If they have an option to go through something with a resistor or not go something through the resistor, they're going to go through something without the resistor, okay? So in other words, they're going to take that route there. So let's close it and I'll show it to you. There you go. No electrons going through the resistor or going through the non-resistor. And look how bright that light bulb is, okay? We can't exactly say it's double because there was no number, but watch the current. Do you see the current is double what it was? It was 0 0.9 and now it's 1.8. So therefore, we can say the current was evenly split between these two resistors. Okay, do you agree? Okay, now let's open that and let's get rid of this dude. Delete. Okay, and let's look at our voltmeter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the voltmeter on this side of the resistor. Now remember these light bulbs have got exactly the same resistance. Okay, exactly the same resistance. So if I put the voltmeter across here, do you see that the voltmeter reading is 8,999 volts? Okay. Now, if I put the voltmeter reading, voltmeter across this one, do you see it is 9 volts? Okay, so 8.999 and 9 volts are close enough, okay? Now, what would happen if I put the voltmeter across both of these? 
Okay, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, remember the volts are measuring the amount of energy it takes to get around a circuit or the amount of energy it takes to get through something, okay? So what we did was we worked out, we found out the amount of volts, like we did not at the moment, okay, but look here. But yeah, we will see that it's 8,999 volts, which is similar to this one. And there you can see that it's approximately 18 volts, 17.999. So what is it? It is this 8.999 volts. And then all they've done is they've added this 9 volts to get 17.999 volts. So therefore we can say, okay, we therefore know that when we add resistors in series, Okay, so I'm just going to draw this out for you guys and I'm going to call this an ammeter one, resistor one, ammeter two, ah, oh, that's supposed to be a circle, a squiggle, okay, ammeter two, resistor two, and then let's put another ammeter here, ammeter three. And guys, you guys, when you draw circuit diagrams, need to use rulers, eh? Okay, so what did we say? We saw that the ammeter reading was the same the whole way through the circuit. So A1 equaled A2 equaled A3. Okay, we also saw that the volts, the voltmeter reading, and um, if I put a voltmeter across here, Let's call that V1. And remember that the voltmeter is always connected in parallel because it's got a very high resistance. And the only way that ammeter can be connected is in series because it's got a very low resistance. So V1 plus V2, okay, equal the total voltage. Okay, let's just prove that to you again. Let's say, for example, I take this, so this is 17.999, okay? If I then take this over here, do you see that that's the voltage across the battery? And that's 18 volts, okay? Now, admittedly, this is 18 volts, and this here is going to be 17.999. That is just really um, measurement error, okay? We're basically saying it's 18 volts, okay? So what we're saying is that the total, if I took a voltmeter here, a voltmeter V total, okay, and I measured that, that would be the total voltage supplied to the circuit, right? Not the EMF, remember the EMF is a maximum. So this is total voltage supplied to the circuit is equal to the sum of the volts, okay? And then finally, your resistors, as we saw, were additive. In other words, R1 plus R2, equals the total resistance and this is what we know in a series circuit that the current is always the same throughout the series circuit the volts add up or they split okay and the resistance is additive okay that adds up to be the total resistance okay so let's summarize that the current is the same at every point in the circuit the voltage is divided across the resistors so we said that the resistors in series are potential dividers because remember that volts is the same as potential difference if i say to you what is the measure of the potential difference you are actually working out the volts we get potential difference. So V total equals V1 plus V2 plus however many Vs you need. The total resistance is the sum of the resistors across this, sum of the resistance across the resistors. Ugh. Okay, so now we're going to look at this, resistors in parallel. So let's just have a look at this and you can notice immediately the difference between a series in, um, a series circuit yeah, remember I said to you, a series circuit works like this. You can put your finger down and you can go all the way, okay, let's pretend. You can go all the way around a series circuit without lifting your pen effectively, okay? Yeah, we've got a parallel circuit. So I'm going to come in here and then I have to split. So if I decide to go along here, 
do you agree I'd come along here come along there come along there come along there and that would be the end okay so for example this would be the positive end of my battery and this would be the negative end and do you see that there's a whole couple of branches that I haven't gone through so this is what a parallel circuit looks like the current is split the circuit is split and the resistors are connected in parallel so what we're going to do now is we do exactly what we did before we're going to clear this entirely and do up a parallel circuit. So let's just get rid of the voltmeter for a minute. So we're going to go battery and battery and a wire, little wire. And we're going to shorten it and put in an ammeter. And guys, if you guys are struggling with um, anything like your circuits and everything, please go and look for this website. Um, just you can actually just Google P H E T. P-H-E-T, and you'll come across all these animations of all different sorts of things, and they are all very, very, very useful, and they help you to understand what is going on in the different sections, okay? So it's really very useful. Okay, so I'm connecting an ammeter to it. Then we're going to take a second one. Okay. And we're going to take another wire. What do we call bend these wires anyway? And a light bulb. And let's put an ammeter on this one. Okay, we'll only do two again just to understand what's going on. And then we'll put another ammeter here. Oi, sorry, I did not want to split the junction. Um, okay, we'll put an ammeter there. Hmm and shorten that and we'll put a wire here whoopsie we need actually we need because we actually need is a switch how do we get to split the junction there it is we need a switch okay so so let's just put a switch in okay right let's try again let's put a switch in okay <laughs> why did let me put the switch in Okay, let me try again. There we go. There we go. That's better. That's better. So now the ammeter is connected to the switch. And the nice thing about these wires is we can stretch them. Isn't that pretty? Okay, and then, okay, more or less. And then we can just put another piece of wire in. And then we can close this wire up. Okay. So do you agree that what we've got here, if you had to look at the schematic, is we've got two cells in series, then we have an ammeter, then we have a branch, we have one resistor over here, and we've got a second resistor over here, and we've got an ammeter reading for this resistor and an ammeter reading for this resistor, and then it comes back together again, Okay, and then we've got an ammeter for that, and then we've got the switch. Okay, so now if we go back to LifeLock, and then I close the switch. Okay, what do you notice? First of all, do you notice that this reading is 0.6 amps? And this reading is 0.6 amps, but this current here is 1.8 and 1.8. Okay, I just want to change this to none. Okay. It's to, this changes to 1.8 and 1.8. Okay, so do you see? Okay, let me change it to give it give it another idea. Wait, stop, 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 stop. Let's split this. If I split this junction, do you agree the current is now just a series circuit? And all that's happening is the resistance is going, I mean all the little electrons are going around the circuit through this ammeter, through that ammeter. Uh, yeah, I thought so. Okay. This should actually read 1.8. There we go. And that should read, that's much better if I can just get it right. Let's just split this one. Split. And let's make this move over a little bit. And then let's put a little wire between them. There we go. There we go. Now you can see the numbers. So do you see that this is 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, and there's no electricity going through this branch. Now I'm going to rejoin this. Okay, now do you see that this is 3.6, this is 1.8, this is 1.8, and that's back up to 3.6. So what are we saying? We're saying the electricity is coming along here, coming along along there, and at this point it splits. 
Okay, and because these resistors are equal, half of the current goes through here and half of the current goes through here. And then they join up over here and then they get both amount of the current going through here. And if you look carefully, you can see that these electrons are actually traveling faster through this than they are through each of these. Now remember that the current measures the rate of the electricity. And obviously, since they've got resistors here and here, this is going to be slower than over here where there's no resistance. Okay, I just want to split this again to show you something. Now look at the brightness. Okay, there's the brightness of the light bulb over there. Okay, now we connect it up and check the brightness. Okay, I'll do it again. It's the junction. Okay, brightness of the light bulb. You're watching, 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 watching. Okay. Okay, so do you see that the brightness of the light bulb does what? Okay, is it increasing or decreasing or staying the same? The brightness of the light bulb should stay the same because this is how we connect our houses. So by doing this, okay, let me just split it once more. Oops, I don't want to remove it. Let me just split it once more. And uh, let me put a light switch in here. And then what we're saying really is that this might be, for example, your, your kitchen, and this might be, for example, your bedroom. So at the moment, the light is on in your bedroom, right? Now you go into the kitchen, you put the light on, and then you come out of the kitchen and hopefully if you've been trained well by your mommy and your daddy you switch the light off again okay and for some reason switch went okay so now you understand what is going on with the current okay the current is split in a parallel circuit okay now let's look at the bolts okay so if i put a voltmeter across what happened it split Okay, don't worry, I'll fix it now. I don't know why I did that. I had a nervous breakdown. Well, it is in parallel across it. Hmm, what is going on? Okay, let us remove that bit and connect this up. How did I break it? Hmm. I don't know what happened. Let's reset. Okay, so if I reset this, okay, it's going to have a battery and a battery, and this is quite quickly. You've got a wire, and I'm going to leave the ammeters out because we've shown you what happens in the ammeters, okay? So you've got a wire, and you've got a wire. And you got a wire. And I'm not even going to worry about a switch now either because we don't need it. And a wire. And a wire. And a wire. Okay. And another wire. And a wire. I know this is tedious, I'm sorry, but it's going to be good to show you what happens to the volts because that is very, very, very important. Because if you guys understand this about power your circuits, if you understand this about your series and parallel circuits, then you understand that electricity and electric circuits is so easy, it's ridiculous. So you need to get to grips with this, which is why I'm taking the time to show you this, but why? There we go. Let's just split that. Okay. Put the light bulb there. No. Let's try again. Split the junction. No. Can I say it's very difficult to do this when these things don't want to move? Okay, right. And then let's just split the junction over here. Why is that electrons not flowing around that? I don't understand why this isn't working because electrons should be flowing around this already. Um, hmm. Okay, for some reason this 
animation has just stopped working. I don't know why. So I'm going to love and leave it and I'm just going to explain it to you. So what we've said now, and we only had two resistance series, I mean parallel, but it really doesn't matter, is that if we had an ammeter here, an ammeter here, an ammeter there, and an ammeter here, and we'll call this ammeter total, then ammeter total would equal A1 plus A2 plus A3. Okay, compared to the resistors in series where the ammeter readings are all the same, and then if we've got a voltmeter reading, and this is what I was hoping to show you, if this is V1, this is V2, this would be V3, okay, and this would be V4, then what we would find out is that V total, which would be the total voltage, is the same as V1, which is the same as V2, which is the same as V3, which is the same as V4. Okay, and I'm going to explain to you how I explain it to my students every time. Let's say, for example, you have got a resistor here, R1, and you have got here a resistor 2. And let's pretend that resistor 2 is way bigger, way more bigger, way bigger resistance, much more ohms, okay? Now, I want you to think of electrons as little guys going around the circuit, okay? So they go along the circuit, la, 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 la. And they're little teams that they have to run around the circuit, okay? And they get to this point over here. And now their aim is to get back to this point in the shortest amount of time possible, but their whole team has to get back, okay? I know we draw it like this, but at this point here, it actually looks like this. It's coming, if they could call that A and this would be B, then it actually looks like this, where this would be A and there'd be a little resistor, and then big resistor, and then B. Okay, so if this is a really big, scary resistor, okay, like the equivalent of a big mountain, whereas this is like a little hillock, okay, small hill, then do you agree that if you had three dudes coming through here, okay, you need them all to get to here, this side, at the same time and as fast as possible. So do you agree I would send more people through the smaller resistor? I would send more people through the smaller resistor Okay, and I'd send my biggest, fittest, strongest guy. I'd send my biggest, fittest, but only one of them. Okay, if I've got three guys, okay, for example. Okay, so then I'd send one guy, for example, through here, and I'd send two guys through here. But the ratio of how I send them through is actually dependent on the size of these resistors. So if the resistor, if this resistor at the top is one ohm, and this resistor at the bottom is two ohms, then what you do is reverse it. You do a reverse ratio. So this is a one to two ratio, right? So when you get your electricity coming in, we actually split it on the reverse ratio. So twice as much current, two times as much current is gonna go through here, and half as much, one, or actually it's gonna be one third. And then one times I is going to be going through here. So the way you work it out is you go, well, this ratio is two to one or one to two. So if I say to you, just because it seems a bit weird, but let me explain it to you. If I say to you, here's a cake, and I say, um, I wanted you to break this cake up so that this boy, boy A, gets two-thirds of the cake. Okay, two-thirds of the cake. How are you going to do that? Well, do you agree I would actually split it up into three pieces? I'd go, well, that's three pieces. And I go, okay, well, he can have that bit there, and we left with this bit here. So that's how we get to two-thirds, okay? Now, what is happening here is we're taking this current, all the current that is coming in here, okay? Okay, this is like all the current, okay, in amperes. And we need to split it up into a ratio of one to two, okay? So if I say to you that the big brother gets two thirds of the cake and the little brother gets one third of the cake, then do you agree that the big brother is getting two times as much as the little brother? Okay, so what did we do? We actually broke it up into a ratio of one 
to 2, right? And how did we do that? We divided by 3. And the reason we divide by 3 is because we're adding 1 and 2. So 1 plus 2 equals 3. So we're going to take this, whatever this is, and add them. So 1 plus 2 equals 3. And then what we do is okay, say, okay, well, the bigger of the two parts has to go through the smaller resistor because we're going to have more electrons running faster through this resistor and we're going to have fewer electrons going through here. So like I said, let's say that this resistance here is 1 ohm and this is 3 ohms, okay? So do you agree that my current is going to work like this? Okay, my current's going to work like this. Let's say, for example, this is 8 amps, okay? 8 guys, 8 amps. I now need to split it up, okay? Do you agree that the total I have to split it up at is 4 parts, okay? 1 plus 3 is 4, okay? So I'm going to go, well, that means that one part is 2 amps. Okay, but it splits up opposites. It's a reverse ratio. So that means that three parts are going to go through here and one part is going to go through here. Why? Because this is three times as big a, a, a resistor. So because it's three times as big a resistor, it's going to have less current going through it. In fact, it's going to have three times less current going through that. So we'll, we go, well, what's three parts? Well, one part is two amps, so three parts is going to be 6 amps. So we're going to get 6 amps going through here and we're going to have 2 amps going through here. Okay, so 6 amps is going through there, 2 amps is going through here. You see we started off with 8 amps. We now have 6 amps and 2 amps. 6 plus 2 is 8. So therefore we can say that yes, the total current is equal to the sum of the currents. Now, let's talk voltage. So remember the voltage measures the amount of energy to go around a certain part okay this is the voltmeter the voltmeter measures the amount of energy it takes to get through that resistor okay but for the bits that are going through so do you agree that we were told that v is equal to ir okay first of all we were told that it was ohm's law okay so before you even do that before you even explain it let's just talk that out if that's the case for for this one from a to b over here this top line we've got six times by one we've got six times by one which is six and over here we've got v is equal to i r which is going to be three times by two which is six yay so therefore we can show that the amount of energy required to go through both the power resistors when they're in parallel is the same but let's think about that it makes sense as well because yeah we are sending through more electricity more current but it's at a lower resistance yeah we've got a higher current but therefore a much lower resistance so it works out to be the same Okay, so those are your rules. And then there's a final rule, okay? And again, we've spoken about this already a little bit, okay? Your resistors in parallel, the more resistors you have in parallel, the, the, the smaller the resistance, okay? And you can think of it this way, and if, let's say we've got lanes of traffic, okay? So if I'm coming along and I'm traveling from, say, I don't know, um, let's see, where would I be traveling from? Let's say we're traveling from Cape Town to Joburg, okay? So we come along the N1, okay? And the first part of the N1 is two-lane traffic, two-lane, okay? So we're coming along and there's only so much traffic can go through, okay? Then suddenly, suddenly, opposite Bloemfontein, it opens up to five-lane traffic. It's awesome. Suddenly, this road does this. It opens up to five, and of course they want all the traffic up there because they know what people are going to do. It opens up to five lanes, okay, four or five lanes. It's ridiculous. It's awesome, okay? So what's going to happen? The traffic that was in these two lanes is suddenly going to split, okay? The very fast people are going to go along here, zoom, and the slow people are going to chug along here and, and carry on and carry on. And eventually then, after they get past Bloemfontein, while past Bloemfontein, it goes back down to a two or three lane, okay? But at this point, hopefully, the traffic's separated out enough that it doesn't affect the 
the, the traffic on this end, okay? So what is happening? You can think of this as being the same as circuits, okay? When you've got one resistor, it's the same as this. When you've got one resistor in parallel, when we've got two or more resistors in parallel, it means we've got extra lanes. So we can send our current through more ways. We've got more ways to get to this side. We've got more ways to get from this side to this side. So the greater the number of resistors in parallel, the smaller the resistance, okay? The more resistors you have in parallel, the smaller the resistance. And there is a formula for it. It says 1 over R parallel is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And this is on your formula sheets. You don't have to memorize it, but you do need to know how to work it out. Okay, so what did we say? We said the voltage is constant across the resistors in parallel. We said the current is split across the branches. The resistors in parallel are current dividers. And the more resistors in parallel, the smaller the resistance. Okay, so if you have two resistors in parallel, there's a trick that you can use. You can use this formula, which says you can use the product over the sum. You can use the product of the resistors over the sum. So you can say, R, the parallel resistance is equal to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. And you're perfectly happy, I'm perfectly happy for you to use it, it's not a problem. I do, and then we are supposed to cover it with you in the curriculum, which is why I'm covering it with you. I do hesitate, however, to advise students to use this because, first of all, it's not on the formula sheet. So you can make the mistake when you come to memorizing it. Also, it only works when you've got two resistors in parallel. The minute you've got three resistors in parallel, you can't go around and going R1, R2, R3 is R1 plus R2 plus R3. That is not true, okay? It only works for two resistors in parallel. So I'm a bit hesitant about this, but now I've shown you that it exists. There is a shortcut equation, which you guys are welcome to use, but only for when you've got two resistors in parallel. Okay, so I thought the next thing we needed to do was to go through some exam paper questions because the best way for you guys to learn how to use our knowledge is to practice, especially when it comes to science and maths. Seriously, guys, I know you're going to think it's mad, especially when you must teach us say you need to do at least an hour of maths a day. Okay, similarly, you should be doing at least an hour to 45 minutes of science a day. Okay, admittedly, I wouldn't expect you necessarily to be doing an hour of science in grade 10, but by the time you get to grade 12, you should be doing an hour of science and an hour of math a day. Yes, I know. I don't know when you're supposed to do the other subjects. Okay, so now, two learners asked, but were asked by the teacher to connect three resistors in series, three resistors in series, and to connect a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the combination of resistor 1 and resistor 2. They were also asked to connect an ammeter to measure the current in the circuit. The learners could not draw a circuit diagram for the connection, but they drew a sketch that are given below. Study the sketch and answer the questions given below. Okay, so they were told to connect three resistors in series. Okay, so let's use a highlight and see what they did. So three resistors in series, resistor one, resistor two, resistor three. Okay, we're happy with that. Then, okay, they were asked to connect a voltmeter. They were asked to connect a voltmeter. And you can see that they've connected this voltmeter like that. There's the voltmeter. And then they were asked to connect an ammeter. They were asked to connect an ammeter. And you can see here is how the ammeter was connected. Okay, there are two very serious mistakes that they made in the connection. Okay, I'm really hoping you guys are already thinking to yourself, well, it's pretty obvious what their mistakes were. It says, study the learner's diagram, describe the two makes, mistakes that the learners made. Well, they messed up these connections. Do you agree? Because, okay, these resistors are in series. I'm happy with that. And they connect to the battery and life is good. But this is a voltmeter and a voltmeter is a very high resistance. And because it's got a very high resistance, you cannot connect it in series with the circuit, which is what they've done. They've gone through from resistor three all the way to the 
positive end of the battery. So therefore, what is wrong with this? What's wrong with this is the connected in series. It needs to be connected in parallel. Needs to be connected in parallel. And similarly, the ammeter has got a very low resistance. The best way the ammeter is going to work is if it's in the circuit with the rest of the components. So what's wrong with this is that the ammeter must be connected in series. Okay, there we go. So they messed that up. Now it says, I'm just taking so we know what we did. Okay, now it says draw the correct circuit diagram based on instructions given by the teacher. Also include a switch. Okay. So the correct diagram would be, do you see we've got two batteries and we're going to draw it in exactly the same order. So it's going to be right, a small, big, small, big. I mean, big, small, big, small, because the big one represents positive. If you guys struggle with remembering which way it represents what, I always go, well, the plus can be broken up into two lines that then add together. So that is why the, this is the positive end, okay? Whereas that's the negative end is half of that, okay? So we've got that. Then what should happen is there should be an ammeter here. Doesn't matter where. And then you could have three resistors. You could have resistor one, resistor three, then resistor two, then resistor one. It doesn't have to be that far away. I don't know why I did that. And then what I would do is I wanted a switch. Doesn't matter where you draw the switch. I'm just putting it over here. Really doesn't matter. And we want a voltmeter that says they want to measure the potential difference across a combination of resistor one and two. So that means your voltmeter is only supposed to be across resistors one and two. There you go. So that is your beautiful circuit diagram as it should be. Right, now it says the diagram of a voltmeter connected in the circuit is shown below. What is the reading on the voltmeter? Okay, so that's pretty easy to do. The whole point about this is just making sure you guys can read. First of all, you can see that the voltmeter reading starts is where the arrow is, okay? So do you agree that halfway to 20 is 10? Okay, but this is one, two, three, four, five notches. So that means that every one of these is worth two, so therefore that voltmeter reading is 12 volts. Now it says a potential difference of 24 volts is applied across the resistor to drive a certain charge through it. The work done is driv in driving this charge through the resistor is three joules. Calculate the charge. Okay, so we know, what are they giving us? They're giving us that V is 24 volts. They've asked us, they've told us that the work done is three joules and they want to know what Q is. They want to know what Q is. What is the charge? Okay, so you guys can look on your formula sheets. We did do this formula yesterday. We did it. Okay, and it is that W, where is it? W is equal to VQ. Okay, but we are solving for Q. Therefore, Q is going to be W over V, which is 3 over 24. We can divide both of these by 3, so it becomes 1 over 8. Okay, and then we don't like that as an answer in science. We need decimals, so we're going to get out our calculator. And we're going to say, okay, fine. We're going to go 1 divided by 8. That's not going to work at all. We're going to go 1 divided by 8 equals 0.125. So Q equals 0.125 what? Coulombs. There you go. Right, grade 10, that's it for today. I hope that you will join me again on Tuesday when we carry on with electricity and we're going to do more exam paper questions. Um, otherwise, have a wonderful weekend. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.